everyone, welcome back. Thank you for joining me here this week. I'm gonna jump right into it because I spend a little bit more time screencasting and showing you exactly how I'm building and putting together the mockups for the first in-app experience that I'm helping at with ConvertKit. And as you know, a lot of you, if you've been with me for a little while, you know some of the onboarding videos that I've worked on and some of the things that I've done to help new customers have a great experience at ConvertKit. But this is the first time that I've been able to help build something directly within the app. So you're gonna see how I'm using Sketch and Envision to put together the mockups and some of the workflows and prototypes for like letting people see how they can go through ConvertKit and how we're building that experience for them for the first time. So let's go ahead and dive into the workflow. So here's my first go inside of Sketch, and it's been really fun to put all of these different wireframes together and mock everything up in terms of how things will look inside of ConvertKit. And to be completely honest, I don't know how much of this will actually be what I'm putting down here. We have a bunch of talented designers and product people at ConvertKit, but it has been really fun to lay things out and look at what the workflows might be and how we can move people from uh, place to place and make sure that they're getting the information they need as they begin to be onboarded. So here inside of Sketch, the way that I've started this out, and again, this is my very first project inside of Sketch, and so the way this starts out is that you have these different pages, and I've got a just a basic one set up right here that was kind of the initial survey mockups, and then we have the onboarding progressive page. And as you'll see, I kind of laid everything out here based on what a workflow might be. So there's a couple of different paths that people can go down as they come into ConvertKit. I'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. I started all of these by uh, setting up an artboard, and when you create the artboard, just going with a desktop HD, so that 1440 width, and then I just started laying in symbols and icons and even just like really basic rectangles. So you know, let's uh, go right in here. This is an initial uh, survey that people will see when they want to sign up for a ConvertKit. And so you can say, let's start with a few key pieces of information that will help customize your account experience. And these are all, again, just circles and text and uh, I'll show you in just a second where that connects into Envision and how how that's set up. So you can see we've got a progress bar down here. These are icons that Charlie, our designer, Charlie Marie, which you know, uh, mocked up or not mocked up, just created. And so we've got those down there. And then uh, getting some more into how ConvertKit itself looks and what I've done in here. So a lot of this is just screenshots. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> to be totally honest, uh, I know I'm gonna find a better workflow for how to do this inside of Sketch, but for right now, a lot of the things that you'll see, like this is just a screenshot that I did make an object out of, and I did that. Just when I dropped it in, you can, like say for this, uh, and I probably made this, enough. yeah, I could create a symbol for this right here and then it would show up in my symbol uh, library. So yeah, I've already done that. Let's pop back into progressive. So just making some different uh, changes here and uh, a lot of this, let me show you kind of the what this one looks like in terms of automation because this is where it's just a lot of layering. And like I said, I know I'm gonna find a better way to to do this, but let me see, let me show you how I, yeah, so this is already locked in. But yeah, I'm just dropping in some different things and there's a lot of layering that goes on, probably more than I would like to do and is necessary to do inside of Sketch, but that's how I've created it and you can see some of these other, other thing, like a different share page that people can have and this is just how it'll lay out in ConvertKit. Uh, let me show you this one. This is one that there's, uh, for a lot, for better or for worse, there's a lot of layering that goes in here. And I think it, you know, probably a better way to do it inside of Sketch. Like I have no idea what to do with Slice <laughs> right here. Um, I haven't made any vectors or used the pencil at all. So uh, interested in the comments, if you're watching this, like, Maybe you can give me give me some tips on what that would be used for, and I know I need to watch some more YouTube videos on it. But like this right here, you'll see. Let's uh, come back into customized content, open up this. So you can see there's just a lot of like there was like there. I just <laughs> put a rectangle over that and filled it in with uh, color so that you couldn't see it anymore. And then that's where I put the convert kit form. And you know, some more, here's another, yeah, so that's just a rectangle to kind of give it that look, um, which is just consistent with other ConvertKit 
uh, design. The reason that I put a, probably put maybe more effort into the look than I needed to, given that it uh, it's probably going to change. And like I said, there are uh, like true designers that are going to be making it look the way that it eventually needs to. But the way that I the way that I think about this, the way that I think about this is. Like if I can make an extra like 10 to 20 percent effort to make it look much better then I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that's what this is right here. For example, though, like down here at like this page, ready to add subscribers to make this look the way that I would feel like I really want it to look it would take me like just as long as it took or longer just to drop this in. So I'm getting the same idea across just by doing this here, and it would have taken a lot more time to really mock it up and design it the way that I would think about, especially when our designers are probably going to make changes on top of that. Uh, same thing right here. This is kind of a modal a modal mock-up in terms of what a knowledge base article pop-up could look like you can see it's kind of it's kind of janky up here like that's just you know it's a hard edge where it should be a rounded edge and again like i can drop this in here a 10 there's not much of a 10 percent change for me right here and making it look way way better re requires way more effort than just getting the idea across uh, same thing down here with these subscriber uh, tabs you know, I would want them to maybe look more like actual tabs instead of buttons, but we know what this is and we're gonna, we'll make comments in Envision to make sure that they get to where they need to be and I'll just make a little notation about that. So again, like there's not really a 10% option right here that's gonna make it way better. And I guess even to, to backtrack on that a little bit, this is actually the 10 to 20% option because not doing this just would have been a rectangle, would have just been a rectangle or even a rounded rectangle that didn't have any kind of fill color that didn't match these colors at all. So that was this, as you're seeing it, is the 10 to 20% improvement and making it a 100% improvement to get it way closer to what it might look like as an end result is something that would have taken me way more time. So that's just kind of how I'm thinking through the wireframing and designing process right now of you know, what do I need to do to make things look as good as they can without putting in an inordinate amount of time into like refining and designing when that's not even going to be the part of the process that I'm a part of. So here's the Envision prototype that I have set up for the progressive in-app onboarding. Let's take a look and see how everything connects and comes over from Sketch. Again, this is the first prototype that I've built inside of Envision. I find it really easy to use. I like it very much. And so let's go ahead and take a look. And all this, again, synced up directly through Craft, which was incredibly useful. So when people come in, again, this is a really basic initial screen. Dylan, it, Dylan and Charlie are going to be making this look a lot prettier. But one of the things that I really like inside of Envision is this build mode. So we're just going to click on this and I can create these hotspots that basically say when people click on this area, it can take them to any other uh, prototype screen that I have set up. You can see them all right here. I like how it has the uh, thumbnail to the left. You can also do a few other things. I've used external URLs in a couple places, but mostly just taking people through the prototype screens right here. So I really like that. Let's go ahead and click out of it. Um, and again, I'm just keeping this really simple. I need to change this one out because it's an old, let me go ahead and delete this one. And uh, so you can see right here, you know, what email tool we're we using before ConvertKit. There's you know, different options right here. And uh, what we're doing is we're using some of this information to help the customer figure out how to best set up ConvertKit. And so when we know they're migrating, what, how many subscribers are you bringing in, uh, use some social proof up here. And then this is another path that people can go through. And when we bring up build mode right here, what this will do, let's go ahead and click on uh, when they enter in. I need to, we need to kind of work on this a little bit, but when they, just as a prototype though, let's just say create a hotspot here, link to the destination of migration, uh, create account. Okay. And let's go back right here. So. Uh, this I'm just gonna put a hot spot all over this one because what's gonna happen is once people select their number of subscribers it's just gonna auto advance them to the next screen so we're gonna go from uh, let's see 
No, just this right here. So this one brand new, what I want them to go through to right here is if they do not have a website yet, let's create one right here separately. And now when someone clicks on this, it's gonna be no website. So let's just show you what this would look like now. If they click on this, it's gonna go to create your account. Actually, that actually does need to go to a different screen. But if they click on this, then it's going to just say, hey, we'll take care of that. Let's just start with introductions. My name is Matt, blah, blah, blah. You can see also that the uh, progress bar is filling up. It's just a few questions, but it gives people a good sense of what they're, how far along they are. And now what we actually need to do here instead, yeah, create account uh, platform. So here, if they do click on this, it's going to say, great, which website platform are you using? Because if right back here, if they don't have a website yet, then, yeah, that's kind of a non-starter at the moment. But if they do have a website, then we can ask, you know, what kind of platform are you using, haven't picked or other, and then they'll just go right through to, let's go ahead, do another build here for a hotspot. And for this one, it's going to be... Uh, create account, new user. So this is just the survey and that's how creating a couple of the hotspots and then you'll see uh, different things here. In fact, I'm, I'm excited about this. So this is for, this is for a new user again, like a totally new and a newbie user. And when they click on this now, like, okay, I've created my account, I'm gonna take them directly into uh, customizing their content. So to know that once you click on create account right here, you know, let's just say wherever everything's filled out, and then all of a sudden you see, I mean, it's not gonna have Nathan's face there, but I'm gonna fill in this right here is gonna be their name, and we can hard code that, I'm guessing, Dylan, we can hard code that. And then uh, it's not gonna be their name unless we can grab something from, or it's not gonna be their face. Uh, we can grab something from Gravatar and actually, and obviously give them the opportunity to upload their own headshot or whatever. So this is what we would take them to right away. And I think that's a really uh, great initial experience to just be able to say like, okay, here we go, here's your form, let's go ahead and share it. We've got a couple options, we can say need more options, this right here, there needs to be, we're gonna add one in for just a straight link to make that a little, little easier too. But you can see here like what I've been able to set up inside of Envision, let's go ahead and look at build mode one more time, that I've got a hotspot template set up right here, and these just show up on the, because we've got the you know, the object right here, the menu stays the same. So I can click around here. These green ones just always show up the same way, but I can say, let's go into automations. We can come back to forms and that'll take people back through settings, subscribers. Now here, I kind of showed you this back in sketch as well, but this is where just getting the idea across because other people on the team are going to be better at uh, creating this workflow or creating the final design than I am. But when we click on this right here, actually, let's go ahead and add one more hotspot for import from MailChimp. And because I did create a screen here, so let's just find it. Here we go. And click. There we go. Easy, easy. So these are where the buttons are showing up again. So and I added some extra text in here. You can kind of see, let's go back over to, uh, there's not, let me go ahead and create a, a new hotspot here. So this needs to go to uh, subscriber import and this one needs to go to uh, where is it? Oh, actually it's the wrong one. So this one actually needs to go to CSV import right there. And let me go ahead and apply that hotspot. There we go. So you can see that goes in right there because the, the menu is the same across the entire prototype. So let's pop out of build mode and now you can see right here when I click on this, these all show up, when I click on this, it's just the one. I need to add in maybe another template or just a couple of options up here so that when they click on this, they can get, get back to MailChimp, but you get the gist of the idea. And again, uh, just a few things that I've really enjoyed about this. Uh, again, I can, and I've 
fake mock-up, a video modal right here. Um, same thing, I can go back, create, click on this, and then now I've got this got this built-in automation and you really can kind of see now it doesn't you can probably do it inside of envision but i don't know how to do it yet or i haven't taken the time to figure it out but to really make it reflect that um slide out animation that you get actually inside of convertkit but again this is a prototype for us it's not the actual experience uh, down to the finest details like that but you can see right here uh, newsletter form so it's that same thing that we have i can click on view go back there so that is one thing i'll say you, you probably just noticed that um it will only go like screen to screen if you're hitting the back button. So like right here, I'm gonna, if I click on view and I was trying to hit back, it wouldn't like take me back right back, right to here. It would take me to the previous screen, whichever screen that I'm jumping to. Uh, let's come back in here and then same thing, like just a couple of mockups on giving people information inside of the sequence so they don't have to leave the so they don't have to leave the onboarding they don't have to leave the app in order to get the information that they need all right everyone thank you so much for watching i have two quick asks for you number one if you're watching this and you know how to use sketch you know how to use envision and you're watching me go through this and you're like gosh why didn't you do this or it's so much easier if you do that please leave a comment below uh, let me know what you would do instead and uh, any other resources or people that are worth following and learning from i'd love to hear that and really appreciate it and secondly if you've enjoyed these videos if you enjoyed this video Give it a thumbs up. It really helps people find it and uh, just grow organically on YouTube. And also, if you really like it, please hit subscribe. I wanna try and get to a thousand subscribers by the end of 2017. I have about four and a half weeks to do that. And uh, yeah, your subscription really helps. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll see you next time.